How many are excited to be in God's house this morning? Come on. We are so excited for Vision Sunday, Vision Sunday. And uh, man, I am going to be uh, just sharing a few things that God is doing around the place. And um, if we get that astronomically loud fan off, that it, look how quickly that happened. Man, that's incredible. Power of the Word. Thank you, whoever did that. But um, yeah, we're gonna be preaching and just kind of updating you guys as a church uh, around the vision of the house. And you know, sometimes... Um, actually, I got, I got told off last week for not doing this. So I'm gonna do this this week. Can we welcome our online family? Is that the camera? People watching from all over the place. And so God bless you, welcome. You are part of this house. You are part of this vision. And I mean, Jared's gonna share a little bit uh, later on around FSM, but we've got 18 online students this year from all over the nation and different countries tuning in. And so um, God's doing something through the online ministry. And so that's uh, really, really exciting. And so what I'm gonna do today is just run through a few things and kind of update you on a few different key things that we're doing as a church and partnerships and what have you. Um, then I'm gonna get the fivefold team to get up and share from their pillar and then remind us. And for those of you that... Um, have been around for longer than maybe six months, you would know that uh, we changed the wording of our vision uh, to encounter, equip, release. Encounter, equip, release. And, um, and, and so we did that last year. And so, you know, there's pressure as a church uh, to, to come up with something bright and beautiful at the start of every year for Vision Sunday. But we just really felt, let's knuckle down on what God has already given us, yeah? There's no point in changing and, oh, my water bottle almost went. Do you like my sticker? My daughter gave me, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There we go. It's an anointed water bottle now. But um, anyway, so, so, you know, we're just doubling down and coming back to what God has already called us to do. But there are some really, really exciting things going on in the life of the church that will happen this year. And I wanna run you through them right now. And so the first thing I want, that's probably the most exciting thing ever, is tomorrow we are fasting. Seven days of prayer and fasting. Hey, there you go. It's like, ha why is that exciting? I like my food. But uh, as you would know, if you don't know, twice a year we go on a corporate fast, seven days at the start of the year, 21 days in the middle of the year. And uh, we always see an incredible breakthrough uh, in those times in people's lives individually and corporately. And so the last 21 day fast we had, we all did the same thing. This one, completely up to you. Just seek the Lord as to what you wanna do. Um, but make sure you're actually fasting. Yeah, how many know? I, I don't prescribe to the, the, you know, the pastors that get up and say, you know, fasting is just like, you know, why don't you fast Facebook? That's not a fast. That's just a good decision. Okay? So fast is abstaining from food, just to clarify, okay? And uh, while, while getting off social media for seven days is probably a good thing for your soul, it's not a fast. And so make sure you do a biblical fast, however the Lord leads you, and uh, that'll be really good. And so what you can do is you can jump on that's, uh, that QR code thing, and that'll take you to a, a booklet where we pray for the same thing for seven days um, and just keeps us all kind of in the same space. And I really believe in for God to do some amazing things during this time. And I, I love seven days of prayer and fasting, and I'm looking forward to seeing all of your skinny faces next Sunday. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And so just a couple of things around that. Um, we always do one prayer meeting corporately and I, I just wanna invite you to come to that. That's this Thursday at 6 p.m., 6 till 7 uh, here in this building. And so I would encourage everybody to come along to that. It's very, very important to pray together corporately. It's important to have a prayer life uh, individually, but very important to come together corporately. And I understand life can throw curveballs at you and especially those of you with young families, it can be, it can be tough. But can I ask you, if you're gonna send someone, you know, if, if you can't all come, um, you can bring the kids, that's fine. If you can't all come, then um, please send someone. I would recommend sending the spiritual leader of the home, the husband. Yeah, we're bringing, we're bringing men back, yeah. I was gonna say we're bringing sexy back, but we're not doing that. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we, are, we are, you know, we're just, we're just trying to get things in order here, all right? So praise the Lord. But anyway, please come along to the prayer meeting and it's gonna be great. One hour, it's not gonna be a revival prayer meeting till all hours of the morning. We will, we'll do that at other times of the year, but this is one hour coming together, praying, and then um, you can go home and that's gonna be a really important one to come to Thursday. Uh, some of the emails have gone out and this is our fault around dates. The men's prayer meeting was meant to be on at that time and so we're pushing that out until the 7th of March. So men, please keep your ears peeled for that. Ears, eyes peeled, ears peeled, ears open. Ears and eyes. 
all of that stuff to get to the men's prayer meeting as well. So that's this uh, Thursday, the all-in prayer meeting here for every gender. There's only two of them, by the way. Both genders. <laughs> Amen. It's 10.30, man. I'm loose. Like, I'm done for the day, guys. So you're, gonna, you're getting the loose part of me. Praise God. <laughs> Hey, the next thing that we mentioned last uh, week is Freedom Street Teams. I'm really excited about this, Freedom Street Team. So for those of you that don't know, we, um, as a church, part of our DNA, getting out on the street, preaching the gospel. And uh, we used to do this every week for a very long time. COVID hit, things changed. And so we are doing that again. It's at st- at starting Saturday, the 2nd of March here at 1 p.m. I know that we're gonna get all of the crazy evangelists in the room, but can I challenge you, if that's like, oh, that's not me, you're the perfect person to come. You are the perfect person to come. The, the idea is to equip the whole body to, to know how to share their faith. And um, Matt's gonna be leading that. And the idea is to get a whole bunch of people together and then we'll actually split off into teams and create that um, culture again. I think it's very important. Number one, to get over the fear of man. How many know the fear of man can bind you? What's the worst that someone could say? No. We just gotta get used to being rejected because Jesus was rejected as well. And then you'll also have some successes and people will uh, come to Christ. And it's just our job. How many know it's just our job to scatter seed? It's not our job to save anyone. Bible says some sow, some water, but it's God who gives the increase. And so we're to just scatter seed everywhere we go. And so that's something that we're really excited about. And the idea of um, street preaching or going out and sharing the gospel is that the event would turn into a lifestyle. It's not about the event. The event is meant to lead to the whole body being able to share their faith everywhere they go. Amen. All right, next one that we're gonna be doing this year, which is really exciting. Um, How many remember the Tepuki Gospel Crusade last year? Man, that was so much fun. Just so you know, we had in a town of 10,000, 1,500 turn up. We gave away over a thousand burgers. We saw over a hundred decisions for Christ in the park. 62 baptisms we got in the paper, but we won't talk about that, Uh, you know. And we saw deliverance as a revival in the park. And so uh, we are super excited to announce that in spring of 2024, we are gonna be having the Rotorua Gospel Crusade. In spring of 2024, And so that might make you ask the question, are we gonna plant there? We have our eyes on Rotorua, okay? We just got our eyes on it right now. And so we feel like the next uh, logical step uh, is to go and preach the gospel and do the mahi in the spirit, get some people saved. We've got a small group over there already. And Hannah and Keith uh, really launched that small group. People that are coming from Rotorua to um, here on a Sunday and for small groups, we've got FSM students that are traveling from Roto Vegas all the way here. And so we're really, really excited for what God's gonna do in that place. Uh, those people in that small group are wanting a church. And so we are just, we're just uh, obeying the call of God. And so I'm really excited. The teams will be announced uh, shortly. And so you can get on board and, and serve and uh, do all that good stuff. So Rotorua Gospel Crusade this spring, I think it's gonna be an absolute winner. Uh, we're gonna go there and bring Jesus to that place. And, and so I'm really excited for what God's gonna do in that city. Amen. All right, the next thing in regards to missions, again, just updating everybody. As a church, um, we have up until this point, uh, we put away 10% of all the income that comes into the church um, as part of our missions budget. Now, missions uh, is comprises of church planting, whether that would be Freedom Center churches or other churches. So just so you know, uh, we we love giving to churches that are coming, especially into this city, because What happens, just so you know, in church life is that people get really protective. And so it's it's really, it's not kingdom. And so we just do the opposite. And so when people come to plant a church in Tauranga, we just bless them with money, okay? And so that's what we do because we believe that the gospel is needed. And so we do that. Um, We have churches all around Vanuatu in the islands. And so we respond up until this point, we've just responded to need. Cyclone hits Vanuatu and there's things to be built. We give all that stuff. It's been a very responsive um, way of doing our missions uh, budget, but as a church, we feel like we are, well, we are heading into the 12th and 13th year, which means we're, 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 we're teenagers now as, as Freedom Center. We are a teenager and sometimes it's time to, to grow up and have a little bit more strategic planning. And so one of the things that we've been wanting to do as a leadership team is to partner and build long-term relationships with some people that are doing an incredible work around the world. And so um, 
I am pleased to announce that we are going to be partnering with an organization called Child Rescue. Um, and Child Rescue, <clears throat> which I'm really excited about. So Child Rescue are responsible for rescuing children out of the sex trafficking industry. Okay, children in particular. I want to I want to uh, let you know some stats about child rescue or about the child sex traffic trade. Um, is that over a million children, not people in the sex trafficking industry, just children under the age of eighteen? Okay, over one million currently, and that's a very conservative figure, are exploited and abused by sex trafficking now across the world. One million children. Okay, children, not the sex industry children. Uh, 59% of them are from the Asia Pacific region. And it is a $99 billion per year industry. That equates, if, you, if, you're, if you're a mathematician, to $11 million per hour. So we've, we have an hour and a half church service, call it two hours, it's $22 million is exchanged in hands of people that are exploiting kids in the sex trafficking industry. And so I know we can't solve the whole thing, but we can do what God has called us to do. And so these guys are great. Part of the reason why Child Rescue is great is because they preach the gospel and they make disciples. They're not just physically saving people. We've only really wanted to partner with people who, like it's one thing to feed the poor. I know we have a responsibility to that and do the, the physical things for people. But we are very keen to make sure that the gospel is central to all of that uh, community staff. And so, and so we found these guys and um, funny, I spoke to the, the main guy, the CEO of Child Rescue and he was, he's actually been visiting Freedom Center and sitting in the back row. So it's, it's all just a bit of a God thing, but um, we, are, we are wanting to do that and partner. So we will be um, coming up with an amount or a percentage that we can do to help these guys. And we're gonna be holding what's called a Rescue Sunday where we're gonna invite them to come and just create awareness around that industry. If you go on their website, there's all kinds of uh, documentaries to create awareness. It's a horrific industry. Um, just full disclosure, um, before I got saved when I was 21 years old, I got saved at 22, um, I went to Thailand on a trip with a bunch of boys for a month for all of the wrong reasons. The second time I went to Thailand, I was now pastoring this church and we had a guy in this church that had planted over 50 churches in Thailand. I got to go there in 2020 and now bring the message of Jesus all around. I got to preach all through Thailand and um, it was an incredible turn of events to see I'd come one time for one reason and then the second time with the gospel message of Jesus. And, um, and so I have a real heart to see these kids come out of the sex trafficking industry. And so I'm really excited about that, really excited to partner with them and create a long-term sustainable relationship where we can make a difference, yeah? And so please check out their website, do all the research. And, and for those of you that want to partner with them and maybe do a little bit of extra work, maybe get trained up to rescue someone. I mean, there's so many options, but we feel very strongly led uh, to these guys. And so we wanna keep you up to date that that will be one of our main missions focuses alongside all the stuff we do across freedom centers across the world. But, but as far as a mission, um, we are going to be hitting that child sex trafficking uh, industry and doing our bit to bring healing and hope in that area. Is that good? Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Update on location. So again, again, as I spoke about before, we have an intention for Rotorua. We also have um, uh, Pierre and Joe who are coming in about a week and a half time. And uh, so they'll be landing here with their three beautiful kids and uh, our brother and sister-in-law. So you'll start to see them around. Please make them feel welcome. Their intention is to stay here for 12 to 18 months. Catch what God is doing here and then take it to the capital city, Wellington, and plant a freedom center there. So we're very, very excited about that. Uh, one thing that you'll know about Joanna, my wife's sister, is that she's um, one of those people that just believes for God's best always. Um, and, and, and much to... Um, my detriment, uh, it, God always comes through. <laughs> so, 
So, uh, so you know, she's like, you know, we're just believing in the, you know, the 12 to 18 months that we're going to get a house by the water in Todong. And I'm like, you don't know where Todong, like the, the housing market, I'm like, reality check, you know. And uh, God's so good that uh, the other week I was in the car talking to them and they were just rejection after rejection. Very hard to find a house to rent um, in Todong, especially when you've got an overseas number and no prior rental history. Anyway, they, they had just been like, they'd been serving in Melbourne at a church location there for five years while running a business and just really doing the hard yards, especially financially. And, um, and then I just felt like, okay, just reach out to Glenn Austin. I reached out to Glenn and he, by the end of the day, he had put me in contact with someone who was a real estate agent who was about to move in herself into a home. She's friends with somebody in our church who spoke to them about the future Wellington church plant. Well, she said it must be a God thing because um, I, she felt God say, give up the house and let these guys who will be the future pastors. And it's on the water, on the water in Otomoto. Oh, God is just so good, hey? Um, and so every leadership meeting will be held at their place. <laughs> Praise God. But yeah, bless them as they come. Pray for them. It's a big move. They've got a container coming and, um, and you know, three kids and changing nations. Is, it's a big thing. So um, if you feel on your heart that you want to support them in any way, come and speak to us. You'll see them around. The other thing around locations is in April, um, there's a team of six of us going to two uh, countries around the world. One is Japan. The other one is Turkey, particularly Tokyo and Istanbul. What we're doing there is we just feel the Lord say, go and pray uh, through the land and also support what God is already doing there. And so just so you know, those two nations, Tokyo and Japan, are the two, uh, as, far as, demog- uh, as far as population is concerned, the largest unreached nations in the world. Turkey, Tokyo, uh, Japan and Turkey, and, and uh, in particular, 0.01% Christians. Crazy when you read the New Testament and you see that most of the churches were actually in modern day Turkey, right? And so, especially for me, having a Turkish background, uh, pretty close to my heart. And so we're just gonna go there for a week in each nation, pray, we're meeting with other pastors and just believing that God's gonna birth something. So if, you've, if like your heart skipped a beat when I said one of those nations, please come and speak to us. And uh, we're just believing God to do a mighty work over there. It's one thing to plant churches in a nation that already has the gospel. It's another thing. We've just felt that we've got to do something out there in the unreached nations of the world as a church. And I'm excited for whatever that looks like, yeah? So, so, so exciting. Is that okay? Bit of an update for you. Can I get the fivefold team up? Can we make them feel super welcome? They're just gonna give a bit of an update this morning. Ru's letting the ladies go first. What a man. Go through, Jared. (laughs) Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Um, So I am going to share a little bit about the prophetic space this year and what that looks like. And as you know, last year as we, we launched the fivefold and we explained how we plan on equipping and raising people up. And the prophetic pillar is really exciting, always the most popular pillar. If you've been in any of the group chats where there's a poll, what equip night are you going to go to? The prophetic one's like always miles ahead. Oh, I don't know. It's just a great, it's a great department. Um, so yeah, so it's going to be really great. And we've got some exciting plans for those equip nights. And really, I, you know, I think for me, there's a part of those equip nights that I want to be able to spread out over the course of a year, a really healthy prophetic culture. You know, so it's not just about, you know, what can I get out of this? And I need another word. I need another word. We want to raise up strong prophetic people who can function healthily in the body. You know, we, we are so excited about what God is doing here. I love being in a church where God is moving. And I love that we've been in this move of God for a long time. And that's exciting. And, you know, we're with the wind and we love that. But we also want to be strong people. You want to be able to come home after meeting with God and being in His presence and still be a great parent and still have a good marriage. You know, like there's so much more to being a prophetic body than just always living in the clouds. Um, So I really want us to be able to focus this year on both of those things. How do we steward the prophetic really well, but also how do we have strong, healthy families so we can do this for a long time? Um, And so I I felt at the start of this year, like Adam said, there's, there's this 
expectation that, you know, well, what's the word? What's the word? And even just being prophetic, people come to me all the time. What's the word? What's the word? Have you got a word for me? And I think a big part of good prophetic culture is knowing when God isn't saying something. Because there's a pressure to always be having Him say something. There's a pressure to be able to release a prophetic word every two days online. But actually, knowing when He's not saying something is just as important as knowing what He is saying. And so I want us to build a culture that is a reflection of Him and of His heart, not a culture that bows to the pressure of looking a certain way and doing certain things and meeting certain markers because of human expectations. So I, I feel like even this Vision Sunday where we're not saying, here's the word for the year is important. It's like the Lord is asking us, uh, not this year, just not this year. And I even felt that at the start of the year, like, okay, Lord, if you're gonna give me a word, like I'm, I'm the one in this seat, right? I'm the one currently holding this pillar. Um, but I didn't feel anything and I didn't, and I feel like it's so important to recognise when he's just saying, hey, no, you don't need to do that right now. Um, so I feel that that's, you know, what we want to build as a body. How do, we, how do we go with the wind and how do we live in his presence and be these people and then come back and still build for a long time a healthy local church that helps people get freedom in Jesus? Ultimately, that's what we're building. So those equip nights are going to be really important. We're going to bring in some great prophetic voices and there's a a few prophetic small groups for people who are interested in like kind of growing into that space. But another big part of my heart for this year is to raise up other people who carry the mantle of a prophet who can build this house with us. So each of us here, and I honour every single one of these guys, and we all, are, we love and we are so honoured to be in these roles. But ultimately, this is an assignment. This is not my identity. You know, being a prophet right now is not who I am. Who I am is a daughter of God. And so I love that I get to do this, but I also understand and am so aware that there are other people who are graced and gifted in this way. And it's my job to raise those people up so that Wellington and all these other locations are healthy and they've got strong prophetic voices because we wanna be a prophetic church. We wanna be the kind of church that that actually operates in the spirit of prophecy. When the spirit of prophecy is in a room, we leave better than when we came. We know what God is saying. We have faith. Like this morning, I felt like I'm walking out of this service with an expectation for miracles because that's what the Lord was saying today. Like, hey, I'm a God who, who is doing miraculous things and can continue to do that. That's what the spirit of prophecy builds in our lives. So we're raising up other people to be able to do that. So I just wanna encourage you to lean into this encounter, equip, release and, and and really allow the Lord to speak to you about what you need to be released into. Who is He calling you to be this year? We don't need a church of spectators. We need a church equipped and empowered to go out and live in the call that God has for your life. So, so yeah, that's my privilege to be able to walk us through this sort of part of the church this year and bring along everyone else who feels called and pulled in that direction, which is a lot of us, which is great. So thank you. <laughs> Well, one day I hope to be as smooth as my five folders when I speak, but until then, you'll have to put up with my nerves. Um, so I'm excited. Uh, we've hit the ground running operations-wise this year. Uh, it feels like five months have passed, but that's not quite the case. Um, so 8th of March, 9.30 is where I'm doing my op operations equip um, day. It's during the day, um, and it's going to run every four weeks, uh, and I'm pretty keen to build a team that will... Um, uh, is interested in learning about kingdom administration, uh, understanding the why behind what we do, not just how to do it, uh, but most importantly, give you practical projects to work on um, to help share the load. So uh, come along if you're up for a challenge. Don't we just love Hannah? Yeah. All right. Come on, give it up for Hannah, everyone. <laughs> when she sees me in Tepuki, she's just going to make everything go wrong. She'll be like, why did you do that, Rue? But, hey, so excited that we uh, get to come together and, and talk about these things, but also really excited to talk to you about the pastoral pillar, which I fall into. Um, I'm super grateful for, for being a part of that. But we're going to be doing a couple of things over the next few weeks that you'll see happening on the website and all of these things. And you'll hear more news about it when it comes to the pastoral, when it comes to Freedom Church and how we, Freedom Center and how we care, sorry, about the people for our church. Now, when we are 
this kind of size and when we are growing at such a rapid pace, it's hard for us to, to all do the same things and for all of us to just be one thing to everybody. Um, but what we know is that God is building up people who have shepherding hearts, pastoral hearts. There's been a few people coming to me already and wanting to have conversations about how they can get involved. Now, there's practical things that we need to do as a church to be that pastoral uh, need for the church and for God's people outside of these walls as well. But there's also the spiritual side to it. Now, the Bible talks about this when it says that, hey, if there's someone sick in your house, get the elders for the, of the church to come in, lay hands, and the sick will be recovered. Now, it's not always easy to call on Pastor Adam and Pastor Grace or Greg and Michelle or anybody else from the fivefold team or exec team, right? But I'm believing that the Lord is gonna raise up people with those spiritual pastoral hearts to come in and lay hands on people and see the sick recovered. But we also know this, that we have have the anointing of the Lord in us, right? We, we got an incredible message in uh, Tauranga and in Tapuki around the anointing of the Lord and how that rests upon us. So you can put your hand on yourself too and you can get the olive oil out of the cupboard and just glug it on your head and let it flow down like it flowed down the beard of Arid, amen? But there are some exciting things happening. I'm also super passionate to see marriages really thrive. Um, Natalie and I just really believe that the Lord is putting something on our hearts to see marriages marriages thrive and live out the call of God in their lives. Amen. We know that this is a really strong component. Why God put something together called the covenant of marriage and the world is attacking it right now. But you've heard from Pastor Adam before that we're not supposed to be a defensive church. We're meant to be on the offense. So in this season of equipping, we're going on the offense for marriages. We're going on the offense for kids. We're going on the offense for our youth. We're going on the offense for our young adults. We are believing the Lord to do something incredible. So I'm going to ask you in the next couple of months to invest into your marriage when these things come up. Get away. Have a date night. Go on a day date. Start. Natalie and I did something so cool last night and she'll post a story about it. But anyway, it, it was this thing around. I'm going to be really quick around this, right? So I don't know if you've seen this reel going around where a day date or a, day, a night date and you do it at home and you get art supplies and you try and do a portrait of each other. Oh, man. I was 50 shades darker. Uh, and yeah, I'll, well, I'll post a picture of Nat so you can see it, but I don't want to say anything about it. But have fun together. The Lord has created marriage for us to have fun with each other and to have fun with Him. Amen. All right, so that's what we're going to be doing. Also, quick note on the pastoral side, I'm really going to need your support because my beautiful wife who is not here, but she was here at the 8.30 and I would call her up to stand here, so pretend like she's here. My beautiful wife and I are going to be having our second child. Yes. So, we need some help. We need some help pastorally. I need you to care for me pastorally during this season as I care for my wife. Um, but yeah, we're excited about what God's doing. So let's get passionate and hungry for Him. Amen. Cool. I'm so, I'm so glad He's finally uh, made that announcement because there's been a couple of times I've let the cat out of the bag having conversations and uh, people being within earshot. So, uh, so it's good. Thank you, Ruth, for announcing that. That's good news, good news. Hey, I just don't want to begin with honouring uh, two women uh, this morning. One is my beautiful wife who is at the back there, Jessica. Who knows Jessica? She's uh, just looking after Isaac. She's uh, a wonderful mother uh, to our children and a wonderful wife. And uh, she helps, uh, helps me to lead uh, FSM and is a support for me in the teaching pillar. So I just want to honour Jess in the house. And the other one is uh, Hannah, who is our administration pillar. Who loves Hannah? She's uh, been a phenomenal support, uh, particularly in the uh, just getting operations up off the ground for FSM. And so really honour you, Hannah, for that. And thank you, Keith, uh, for releasing your wife to do everything that she does in the house. And so thank you for that. All right, FSM, just quickly, just wanted to uh, provide a quick update. We had our first week of FSM last week, and it was incredible. It was amazing. It was awesome. And um, we've got over 90 students this year. Uh, which is probably our biggest ever intake. Um, and so this is just phenomenal. Um, so we've got about 70-ish uh, in-class attendees and uh, we've currently got 18 uh, streaming 
online, uh, which is phenomenal. So we've got uh, eight streaming in from Vanuatu. Um, so that's an exciting sort of development. And we've got about eight throughout New Zealand in places like Pawanui um, and Christchurch and uh, Hastings as well. And there is one other, uh, Fungamata, I believe. I said Pawanui? Anyway, <laughs> you get the point. We got them coming from all over New Zealand, which is exciting. And uh, I think we've mentioned this before, but when Adam and Grace asked Jess and I to lead um, FSM, uh, Jess and I just really carried in our heart a vision to see this, not as just a local uh, raising up of leaders in this house, but for it to be a national and international training centre to raise up revivalists and to uh, uh, bless the body of Christ um, and, and to bless the kingdom. And so last year, we had uh, three people reach out to Adam and Grace. I think it was probably two or three days before we started and, and asked, do we have an online option? And, and, and we hadn't even thought about it at that point. Uh, but anyway, we got things together and made it happen. So to see we, uh, that we've gone from three to now 18, the, the, the future is looking bright. And uh, I think, you know, the online uh, streaming is really going to be an essential part of uh, growing and raising leaders and to uh, help local church pastors in that as well. And so we're really excited about that. You know, we've got church plants on the horizon. We've got Rotorua. We've got... Uh, um, Wellington and other locations in the future. And I can really see that uh, this is the training ground for students to uh, be equipped in the Word and to learn, um, you know, the practical aspects of church life so that they can be released uh, into these church plants. And so it's really exciting. If you're interested in FSM at all, uh, we have actually left the application process open so you can go to the website and apply for next year. So if you're just sitting here and listening to this and you just really feel stirred, uh, that's available to you. One last thing, um, we've got a teaching equipping night uh, this Wednesday uh, starting at 6 p.m. And I'm really excited to uh, be uh, teaching uh, on that equipping night. Uh, just to give you a bit of a taste of what, we're, what I'm going to be sharing is I want um, us to develop a love for the Word, so I'm going to speak on that. And then the second part of the evening, I want to talk about the importance of the Word, uh, the power of the Word in our lives. And so I'd love to have you join us. Uh, we're starting that at 6 p.m. and it will go through to 9.30 p.m. Anyway, bless you guys. Cheers. Awesome. Thank you, team. And obviously the locations is where we're moving. As, uh, I'm moving particularly as far as the apostolic pillar will be. I'm excited to start moving into the space of looking after location pastors and, and really looking at vision and expanding that um, and also stepping into overseeing the uh, evangelistic pillar until that space gets filled. And um, you're really excited about the street teams coming and, and uh, doing what they're doing. So just some all-round really good stuff happening in the body of Christ. Amen? All right. Hey, our vision is encounter, equip, release. Let's say it together. Encounter, equip, release. And at the end of the day, it's Jesus's vision. Uh, biblical. We don't need to come up with anything new or fancy. Um, it, it, is, it is what God has called us to do. And, uh, and I just want to run through those three points for you and then quickly go through our core values. And really just the point of today is just to get us all on the same page because how many know as a church grows or even if you're a business person in this room, as your business grows, what you say no to is just as important as what you say yes to. Yeah, and so you've got to keep, you've got to know what God has called you to do so that you can put boundaries in your life. The Bible says that without a vision, the people cast off restraint, which means they have no boundaries. Yeah, and so it's very, very important that we're all on the same page as a church and we know where we're going. All right, number one, encounter. I believe with all of my heart that this generation right here, right now in 2024 needs an encounter with Jesus. 100%. There is no argument, there is no way that uh, a, a good philosophy or, or, or some kind of argument is going to get anybody into the kingdom of God. I believe that 
People are crying out for an encounter with Jesus Himself. And the Bible warns us that in the last days, there would be people that have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. In other words, it'll look like Christianity on the outside. It'll sound like Christianity on the outside, but it will, def- it will deny and, and relegate the power of God to something that used to happen and doesn't happen. The very uh, X factor on our generation right now is they, they want authentic encounters with Jesus. Let me tell you, the, the, the Gen Zs aren't impressed with lights and smoke machines. All of that has its place. But at the end of the day, we want the presence of the Lord that brings us into an encounter with Jesus. Because how many know when you meet Him, everything changes? I mean, you think of the book of Genesis, Jacob and, and, the, and the, the ladder with the angels going up and down. He says, this is none other than Bethel, the house of God, the gateway of heaven. I mean, we are meant to be a gateway to the heavenlies. We're not meant to be a social club that does a bunch of good things, claps and goes home. We're actually meant to be a people who come together and access heaven and bring heaven down to earth. We are people who encounter the, the love and the presence of Jesus. I know that no matter what a person's problem is, if we can bring them into meeting the person of Jesus Christ, everything will be okay. Everything will be okay. I know that every disease bows down to the name of Jesus. I know that every conflict bows down to the name of Jesus. And we are a people who want to bring encounter. In that encounter is what the Bible calls saved, which is the word sozo, which is the full package saved, healed, and delivered. Saved, healed, and delivered. This is what Jesus paid for at the cross, the, the, the thing is, like in John 13, where Jesus washes the feet of the disciples, he gives them a, an interesting uh, question where he says, will you let me wash you? Will you let me wash you? Will you let me come and, and, and wash you and bathe you? And will you let me come and have an encounter with you? And I believe that when you allow the Lord to wash your feet, when you allow the Lord to bring you into the place of genuine relationship in, in His presence, everything changes. So our job as a church on a Sunday anyway is to facilitate public encounters with Jesus. Everything that we do on a Sunday is is geared towards allowing the Holy Ghost to move. People think that we plan things. It's funny, if you only knew what we don't plan, it would actually make you laugh. I don't even know what the worship team is singing on any given Sunday. The ministry times are not pre-planned. We're in the front row going, hey, what do you feel like the Holy Spirit's saying? Is it this, is it that? And then we're just getting out of the way and allowing the Holy Ghost to move. We didn't plan anything that happened in worship this morning. It's just the flow of the Holy Spirit. And that's our job to make sure that we are a people of encounter, that we are a presence-driven church and not a program-driven church. I've seen more done in the, in the presence of the Lord than I can in any program. I've seen people's marriages be restored and healed and incredible, miraculous things take place. Why? Because the presence of the Lord at a moment of encounter with Him can change everything. But here's the heart behind the public encounter. We don't wanna become spiritual gypsies where we just live from Sunday to Sunday, revival to revival, moment to moment, where we come in for that public encounter and we're useless between Sundays. Here's the thing, the public touch should lead to a private kiss. The public touch should lead to a private kiss. Song of Solomon 1 verse two says this, speaking of Jesus, the bridegroom and us as the bride, it says, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth for your love is more delightful than wine. In the New Living Translation, it says this, kiss me and kiss me again for your love is sweeter than wine. The whole point, the whole heart is that we would create a space in our churches across every location where people can come into a public encounter with Jesus that would be an invitation into a private lifestyle of many encounters in your secret place time where you shut the door and meet with your father who is in secret. So understand that we are not trying to build a culture of encounter 
for encounter's sake. It's meant to lead you somewhere and it's to the face of Jesus. That's the heart behind what we do. And so public encounters, yes, man, I love them. There's something about corporate worship that you can't get anywhere else. But please let it lead you that he might kiss you here and kiss you again at home. Kiss me and kiss me again. That's the encounter part of our vision. Equip, and some of you know that we moved last year from a CEO model of church leadership to a five-fold leadership structure, which the Bible, it talks about very clearly. And so I wanna read that quickly. Ephesians 4, verse 11 to 16, it says, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers, so that they could wear a name badge and feel very cool about their new titles. For the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. The point is to equip the body for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. When, until when, until we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. Here it is, it's always around Jesus, right? To a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joint and knit together by which every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share. Man, it sounds like healthy church. Causes the growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. And so on a practical level, we've moved small groups to every second week. The heart behind that is we don't wanna overload people's calendars so that every other week, we can actually have equipping nights held here at the church into each of those five pillars. And so that people could be equipped in those areas of ministry. And, uh, and so not only that, but that we would become a people who live a lifestyle of equipping. It's one thing to have a program and I believe in that, but the other side of it is that we need to be people who equip others in a lifestyle. You're with a new believer, you're, you're taking them through, let's say the essentials, new believers material, and you're equipping them to do the work of the ministry. The whole point of this is that we would be a people who as a lifestyle equip others. Amen. Imagine the whole body of Christ coming and rising up, stopping being spectators and actually taking up the call and the mantle that God has on their life to equip and disciple people that God puts in front of them. I think that would be a really, really exciting thing to be a part of. And, and so we are, we're gonna be pushing uh, essentials, pushing discipleship, all of that good stuff. Again, just doubling down on what we did last year, really just making it healthier, stronger and equipping more people. And then last but not least, Release, 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 release. It's not encounter, equip, control. It's encounter, equip, release. And so the Bible says in Matthew 28, verse 19, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so it's super important that we are a people that encounter and equip, yes, but then release. We wanna champion you to go out into wherever God has called you. It might be business, it might be parenting, it might be whatever it might be, into the church world, into politics. I mean, whatever it is that God has called you to, our heart and our greatest passion and desire is to bring you into a place of encounter, bring you to a place of equipping and then releasing you to be all that God has called you to be. I mean, that would look a lot different than the last 20, 30 years of church life in the West. And so we're coming back to the biblical basics and doing what God has called us to do. Encounter, equip, release. Encounter, equip, release. Encounter, equip, release. And so you'll be seeing that language a lot more this year. Um, you'll be seeing things working around those. And then last but not least for Vision Sunday, I'd love us to just uh, have a quick chat about our core values. How many know that the, the, one of the most important things you can build in church life is culture? Culture trumps everything. You can have a great vision statement. If you don't have good culture, nothing works. Uh, you can have all of the great programs, but if the culture within those programs is wrong and it's not conducive to Jesus being the center and nobody knows where they're going, you'll find that church organizations go around in circles and never accomplish anything in the place that God has called them to be. But when your culture is good, everything's good. 
And if you're a business person here, you know that in your business, as it grows, you've got to define culture and bring everybody back to, hey, this is the goal, this is the values. And how do you build culture? You build culture through values. Values, values build culture. And so I wanna just go through our values as a church as we end this. These are super important. We make decisions around these values. We're coming back here at Vision Sunday to say, hey, reminding us this is who we are. This is what we're called to, encounter, equip, release. And not only that, guys, I I just wanna say this, is that this isn't like, hey, we come here on a Sunday and this is the direction we're going on a Sunday. We use these values to guide our family decisions. We use these, these values to guide our financial decisions. Everything that we do, again, in the, in the public forum of church is hopefully to translate this into the private life of every disciple. And so it's not just like, these are our values, they sound cool. No, 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 let's shape our lives around them. These are kingdom values. These aren't freedom center values. These are kingdom culture values. And so why don't we stand to our feet as we just quickly read them off and, and end uh, this and then I'd love to pray for you. You ready for our values? Most of you know them, but we're gonna go after them. We're gonna double down on them. And our first one, He's more than a value. Jesus, our everything. You'll be surprised at how easy it is to drift away from that which matters. Jesus, our everything. Jesus is our Saviour. Jesus is our Lord. Jesus is our King. Jesus is our message. He takes centre stage. We are a Jesus people, not a religious people. Methods will come and go, but He remains the same. Jesus, our everything. Freedom Centre people, our priority. Our heart is for all people. Come on, someone say all people. Black, white, yellow, jab, not jab. I don't care what shape or size you are. Our heart is for all people. All people are loved by Jesus and we make no apologies for being specifically focused on reaching those who are far away from God. So we'll go into the middle of a a town in Tupuki and and like feed people and get like $7 Kmart pools and baptise them in the park. Why? Because unconventional ways need to happen in in the body of Christ so that we can reach people unconventionally. We don't apologise for doing specific things to reach those that are far away from God. We desire to bring the broken home at all costs. We believe that our light is best seen in the night. Come on, it's time to get the light of the world out of the four walls of the church. It's not the light of the church, it's the light of the world. And our light is best seen in the night. Number three, presence, our pursuit. All that matters is that He shows up. All that matters is that He shows up from our worship to our service. We do it with His presence in mind. When God is in the room, come on, all kinds of life change can happen. Number four, honour our culture. We are vocal with our honour, which means we are not stingy with our words. And I know that church culture will say only honour up, but I'm here to tell you that honour goes every way. Down, up, left, right, back to front. We honour all people, as the Bible says. It means we're not stingy with our words. We are a people who can celebrate who a person is without tripping over who they are not. We honour and we take care of those God has placed around us. Number, I can't count. Five. Someone else can't count, they said six, but it's number five. Family, our function. The Kingdom of God is not a business. It's a family of sons and daughters living in relationship with their Heavenly Father. The church is a covenant family. Number six, miracles are our expectation. You saw that in action this morning. God is a supernatural God and we are a supernatural people. We will not be defined by what the natural realm tells us. We live in and expect the miraculous in seemingly impossible situations. I need you to know that while we're not there yet, 
we will fight for the miraculous. If you come in here terminal, we believe that God will terminate terminal. We believe that God is a supernatural God, that He is the same yesterday, today and forever. And if anything, we're gonna fight for supernatural results. And last but not least, discipleship our mandate. Every believer is called to make disciples. Every believer is called to make disciples. It may look different for everything and for everyone, but one thing remains. We want real relationships. Notice the word real. We don't wanna build a church where people come and fake it till they make it. Come in here as you are, broken, messed up with all of your problems. If we can do real relationships, if we can do real relationships that create real disciples who then go and make more disciples. Come on, why don't we raise our hands to the Lord. Father, build a people, Lord, that know how to encounter, equip and release. Father, build in this house a people who live by those core values. Jesus, our everything. People, our priority. Presence, our pursuit. Honour, our culture. Family, our function. Miracles, our expectation and discipleship, our mandate. Lord, let them not just be organisational values, but Kingdom values that govern our lives, our families, our workplaces. Father, we wanna build according to Your Kingdom, not according to church, not according to culture, not according to the spirit of this world, but we wanna build according to the Kingdom of our God. And so Father, right now we make a commitment, Lord, to build according to Your Word and according to Your ways. Lord, build incredible people in this house. Lord, wherever we go, wherever You call us to plant, whatever You call us to exp expand into, Father, we pray. We pray, Lord, right now, that our mandate, our heart would be encounter, equip, release. And wherever and whatever You lead us to, that we'd be a people that carry Your presence well. In Jesus' Name we pray. And everybody that believed it said, Amen, Amen, Amen.